Okay, I'm gonna show you how to fix this problem right here. Take a look at the steering wheel, listen to this. Let me, uh, let me kill the engine real quick. Hear that clicking noise? So that's caused by... Down in here there's a coupler that's going bad. We're gonna fix so that. Because we're dealing with electricity, especially near the airbag, we're gonna to want to disconnect the battery terminal right here. That's a 10 millimeter. Just loosen that guy up. Make sure you have plenty of room. Okay, so now there's no power going to our car. Now we're safe to go inside. Next thing we need to do is we need to turn our steering wheel. You know, right now it's locked. So what I'm gonna have to do is put in a key to unlock it. Get your steering wheel in the unlocked position. That's kind of hard to turn. And you gotta screw this screw right here you gotta take out. Make sure you keep good accountability of your screws. I'm gonna put mine right there. And there's a screw on the other side. So you have to turn the wheel again. It is more difficult since there is no power. Now get your steering wheel lined back up again, make things easier in the future. That's one more screw right down there. Get that guy right there. Okay, so I've removed that bottom screw from down here. I've made sure the steering wheel is nice and straight. I'm gonna go ahead and lock the key again so the steering wheel doesn't move on me. Remove the keys. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this little housing. Easiest way I found to do this is to get right in here with the flathead and then pop it down. So this is your car, so be gentle with it, be careful. Try not to break anything. So I just made a little scratch right there. Exactly what I was saying not to do. What I did was I put a flathead screwdriver right here. I pushed in and you can see how it connects down in here. So I just kind of popped this up. It's got little connectors all around. Just be careful when you're doing it. Take your time, go slow because you don't want to break any of these. So this, on the Veloster, doesn't just easily come off because it has all these little spots here. So you're gonna have to kind of move that out of the way and it's gonna flop around a little bit. This bottom part, it just comes off. Comes down, and then on this side, it's gonna be stuck by that guy right there. This just pulls off. Set so this aside so we can get to it later. So now we have our steering wheel, steering column. We're going to end up removing all these cables. See this yellow right here? Yellow goes to airbag. Anytime you see yellow in your car, yellow is airbag. That's why we disconnected the cable to the battery. So we're next we're going to take off this panel right here. So first, remove your fuse box cover. And then you need to remove this right here. So once again, we're gonna use a little flathead. I've got a little spot here that I've pulled this off before. You can see it's connected up here, right here, right here, right there, and right there. It's gonna hinge on, um, on your trim right there, on your little gasket. And you have some screws you need to remove. The screw right there, that screw, and that screw. I'm gonna get a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm gonna pull these screws off. Okay, so I've removed those screws right there. The next screw we need to remove to get this off is right in there. Screws off, so we just need to take this panel off. Now, if you look right in here, this panel comes and goes inside there. So it has to basically come up and out. That's a little tricky. Let me just start doing it. So I'm pushing up with my fingers and pulling, and that should be able to come out. So there goes that top piece. There it is. You can see how this is connected inside there. So that comes off. You can see there's, it's hooking in right here. And it's gonna come off over here too, same way. Okay, and you can see 
where those little spots right there and right here hooked in. So this cable's right here. You have to remove this cable. There it goes. Right there. Pop this guy out. Set this panel aside. The nice thing we need to do, do is remove this bolt, that one, that one, and then these two right here. These are 10 millimeter bolts. They're gonna be pretty snug the first time you get to them. So you might have to break them with a breaker. With, I say break, you might have to loosen them up with a wrench there. Make sure you keep accountability of all your screws. Mine are coming out pretty easy because I've already done this before. But the first time you do this, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging. As you can see, mine are pretty much just finger tight at this point. See my Band-Aid? That's because I wasn't smart the first time I wanted one of these and cut myself. If you drop a bolt and lose it, make sure you grab it. I'm gonna pause the video and come back after I get those bolts off. Just wanna show, I got the bolt out. This is hooked on right there. So you're just gonna, when you pull this off, you just lift it up and hook it off of that. Set that aside. You're gonna notice I have a couple of extra wires in my area here. This is for XM radio and some other things that I have aftermarket installed. Don't worry too much about these. This is my, goes to my camera. So some of the stuff you're going to have to do here, we're going to end up disconnecting a lot of these wires. But the first thing I want to do is a bolt way back here. I'm going to see if I can get to it and show you. It should be 14 millimeter. Okay. Let's see if I can get to it. Hard to see. There's the 14 millimeter bolt right back there. That guy's gotta come out. Uh, show you where it's at. So it's above. Here's your steering column. There's your steering wheel. Follow it down. Find your box right here. And it's right back up in there. Trying to focus it on it there. We're gonna get that guy off right there. I'll be back when I'm done. All right, this is what this guy looks like. That's how you know you have the right one. It's a 14 millimeter bolt. Has a lock washer and a regular washer on there. It looks like this. That's, we're gonna remove that one before we remove these other ones up here. So it doesn't just drop on us. But next we're gonna take get rid of uh remove rather all the harnesses. So you've got harnesses kind of all over here, but you need to remove these harnesses so that this can drop safely without causing issues. With that one, if I miss any, we're gonna find out real quick. Because they won't be able to drop without removing these harnesses. That guy. That guy. That guy. Of course, yellow is your airbag. I'm gonna need to get a little. I'm gonna 
pause while I get that yeah, one. That one I had to get from the backside. See how it's bringing you right there? I had to get back there with that. So get that one right here. This one's got a safety latch on it. Okay. You can just kind of see how this harness hangs and you can see where it goes to next. I'm trying to keep this as stable as possible while I record. There's one up in here. this guy so it's probably gonna require two hands as well let's try switching see what I can do here okay and then this is connected to the metal piece and that pops right off just like that so now my harness see how it's hanging it's not connected to anything except for this up here. That's okay, because that's going to come down. But I think we're good to go ahead and remove these next two bolts. So the next bolts we're going to remove, this one right here, and the same one on the other side, right there. Okay, so we're going to remove this bolt right here. This is 12 millimeter. I say bolt, that's actually a nut we're removing. I'm gonna grab that one right there. Also 12 millimeter. You can feel the steering wheel starting to drop, so I'm gonna grab this by hand. I'm holding up the steering wheel with my chest right now. And here goes the steering wheel. See how it's catching right there. Probably gonna need these both. Yes, there we go. And the steering wheel comes down. It all just falls like that, see? So here's the problem. The problem is this guy right here. We're gonna wanna remove these black torques to get inside this guy. I'm gonna get the right torques and be right back. Okay, so these torques bolts are gonna be T30s. I saw somewhere online where someone said it was a T27. Maybe theirs was, but everyone I've seen, Veloster and other Hyundais and Kias are 30s. So get a T30 and get those off. I'm gonna have a hard time doing this with one hand, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these bolts off. I'll show you what's next part. I had to use a combination of um, a Torx bit on a screwdriver here. Um, this little angle guy to get the front one and then the back one back here which is hard to see but you can feel it and you can it's back on this side and then once i got it loosened um, i just ended up pulling the built bit at, out and then sticking the bit in like this and using that to loosen it up and pull the bolts out keep those guys safe while i'm here you can see this is where that bolt that 14 millimeter bolt this is where it was so this is a good angle to see where it was Here's where the steering wheel would be, and it was in right there. So the next part, I'm gonna pull this off. It's blocked by that. I'm gonna pull that off and show you what's inside. And there's the problem. See how that rubber that was in here is just all shredded. This little piece right here is completely shredded. And that's why you have the clicking. So I'm gonna clean this out with a uh, toothbrush, an old toothbrush, and a vacuum cleaner. I'm not gonna use any solvent or anything on this. I'm gonna put in the new piece. We'll be good to go. I'll be right back. Okay, there's the Q-tip. This Q-tip isn't perfect and it catches on a lot of stuff, but it does help gently move a lot of this stuff out of here. It's like the top part up here is pretty clean. It's not a lot of junk in there. I'm gonna get a screwdriver in there. Mess around some.
He's trying to clean this up. I'll be back so when I cleaned I'm out all the major crud. Um, I didn't use any solvents or anything in there, so there's still a little bit of rubber residue. But for the most part, it's pretty clean. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put in this little guy. It's a little rubber coupler. Goes in either way. Seems like five bucks on Amazon. There it goes. So what I'm gonna do next is put this back on there and just kind of reverse the whole process of putting together. I'll let you know if I get stuck on anything. And I'll uh, use two hands for this, try to make it go. I held up the steering wheel with my right hand so I could then grab this with my left hand and I just kind of loosely put in this bolt and this bolt with my fingers just so I could line up the back one and get it right. Um, when I stuck this on, I had to kind of twist it just a little bit until it fell right in. Um, that's because it would turn a little bit while I was cleaning it. So that was one little got you. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting these guys back on and we'll come back. Got those back in, it was kind of tricky. I had to hold this up and then reach back there with my screwdriver. So the next part I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that 14 millimeter bolt right there in the middle of the screen. I'm gonna put that back in. Then go okay, so what I did was I got the 14 millimeter bolt in the back, just kind of in all the way. And then went ahead and got these lined up and I screwed those in, got them nice and snug. So now I'm gonna finish tightening up the back on the 14 millimeter and then we're gonna start putting stuff back together. Back in and now I'm just gonna start plugging in all the harnesses once again. be pretty obvious where they go if we just start slow you'll start figuring out where they are it's nothing too complicated that one's got a safety thing on it it's a lot easier to do when you're using two hands a lot harder to do when you're trying to film the good news is only plug in one place so it's not like you're gonna plug stuff in the wrong it's not gonna plug things in the wrong plug. I'll come back when I'm done with this everything plugged back in the steering column harness I should only have this one and this one remaining again don't worry about these little wires these are stuff that I have from other stuff I know it's not pretty but it's just what I did so I'm gonna put on the metal bracket and then followed by the plastic and we'll get going. Okay, I got this back on. Now I'm gonna put this back on. Plug in the uh, plugs again on this. And I'll, I'll come back once I get everything put back together. It's really just put, doing everything back in reverse. This top piece here hooks in, see where my thumb is? Hooks in to that right there on both sides. So you have to kinda angle it down get it in just like that just like a little lever and then you snap it in snap it in place I have to use two hands to do that but that's how you get that together and of course putting a steering wheel back when you're screwing the stuff back in your steering wheel is probably going to be locked so you have to put your key towards forward and then do the left right to unlock your steering wheel so that you can then come back and put those screws back in. I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting these screws back in, be right back. Okay, I plugged the battery back in, I've closed the, the uh, hood. I'm gonna go ahead and start this up and see what happens. The steering wheel seems to work. Let's make sure the blinkers work. Yeah. Make sure the horn works. Make sure my lights work. They're good. Just a little function check, really. Wipers are working. I know I have this, got this up, but wipers are working. Everything looks good. Yep. And then if you notice, listen to the sound. Let's turn these wipers off. That sound's gone. No more clunking. It's done. That's perfect. Thanks so much for watching. Here's a picture of what the old coupler looked like. As you can see, it's completely destroyed. 
I hope this video worked for you and I hope you can get this going. Let me know in the comments how things went. Thanks for watching.